Okay, so definitely one of my favourite moments of this chapter was when Maruko came in. Me, you know what's kind of funny? The fact that we live in a superhero society and we've had many, like, superhero battles. Yeah, then again, um, some of them hasn't always been out in the open. But, like, you'd expect heroes to drop in and help, right? Like, if I was a hero... And, you know, I was just doing my daily patrols or something like that. And then I see on the news, I don't know, through a, yeah, like through a house or something like that. Or like I'm walking past and I hear someone talking about, oh, there's like a massive fire breakout between two villains on like 5th Street or something like that. I'd be hopping there right over. So like, it's kind of funny how it's like, it's only gotten to this stage. Like I was thinking, where are you guys doing all my and all for one kind of fight? But, um, yeah, Maruko. She's the f number five hero. She's really actually cool. I don't really know her quirk. I'm thinking it's like, she's like a bunny. So it may be like with the whole, it may be like with Suyu, how Suyu has kind of everything that a frog can do. Maybe she can do the same. So she's probably got enhanced agility, maybe a little bit of super strength as well. Like, this is going to be really cool to see more of her definitely in the future. Then the other one... Like, here's the, one of the main things which I want to talk about is Dabi. And it's the whole thing of how Dabi uses the... Well, not Dabi uses it, but either way, the quirk that's used on Dabi is the same quirk that All For One was using during the Camino Award arc. And that's, you know, the teleportation quirk with, like, the goo. Um, so, yeah, here's a question. If All For One's in jail and is... What's the word? Inhibited. Like... Is that the correct word? Look, let's go over that. Let's say if Ulf wants in jail, and he can't. He's not allowed to use his quirks. Like I remember in the, I think 116 or that Tartarus chapter, um, Ulf was just like, even if I sneeze some a little, guns will be pointed at me, or if I even think of activating one of my quirks. So like the guys on top, top uh, surveillance. So it's not like he can use his quirks whatsoever. So this makes us think either one, he somehow managed to transfer the quirks to someone, but who? Uh, it says a little, he, the guy's called Ujik, Ujiko. Um, maybe that's the doctor's name. We don't really know much about the doctor, but all we know is that he's, um, like a comrade of all for one. But let's say he did. When? Like, he was still using that quirk during, not, yeah, basically he was using it during the fight. So, and straight after the fight, he was knocked out and he was imprisoned, um, by the police. So, I'm not really sure. Either he somehow managed to break out of prison or he's able to use his quirks without anyone realising. I remember a couple of chapters back, there was... We did get, he was talking about how if he, like, he would want to give away his quirk, so he'd want to give it back to them. He said he's got a nasty habit of whenever he sees a quirk, he just takes it. Um, so I don't know really what, why Horikoshi was talking about that then. Maybe that was alluding to the fact that, you know, he's, he's wanting to give back quirks, or at least he's transferring quirks. However, in his state of being in prison, I'm not really sure. However, to be honest, um... How long has this been foreshadowed? How long has this been hinted at? A prison break arc. So who knows? Like, I think that'd be pretty sick. But yeah, the fact that Dabby is using that quirk basically confirms either um, Off One has transferred the quirk or two, he's out of prison. It's one of those two. Like, what's, it can't be any um, the other. And yeah, I, you know how I felt reading this chapter? Because obviously all of us, I just love how Horikoshi, he kind of does a lot of red herrings. Like, he'll think we're focusing on this one thing, like the traitor. But no, he's just trying to take off our um, attention or something else. And it's, and what gets, like, released on that chapter? Like, what's the, the um, what's the, um, what's the word? What's the, um... You know, the cliffhanger is something else. I don't know why I'm losing words today. Bear with me, guys. I'm tired. But, um, yeah, so, like, I, how I went, go, how I felt going through this chapter, I think all of us were thinking, yeah, we're going to get a sun reveal. I think I've explained my views. Like, I think it'll be cool, but, like, I'll be intrigued if Horikoshi doesn't go down that route. That's how I'm feeling right now. Um, especially how I don't want his character to purely be, oh, just because he's his son. Like, I want to get some character development, um, characterization or development on this guy here, Dabby. Like, I want to know more about him, and I don't want him to purely exist just because of the subplot of him being Endeavor's son, you know? Because let's say it is, then what's going to happen after this arc? Um, are they just going to, like, restoration of a family kind of thing? Which, yeah, will be pretty um, cool and pretty interesting to see how Horikoshi does that, but, like, 
there's more to there's shoot there's surely more to his character and i feel like we got a little bit about it at the end of this chapter as well when he finally remembered about snatch and um you know what i just realized how nasty they did snatch like snap they done him dirty i i think mr compress put him in like compressed him into the ball whilst um and not endeavor whilst dabby was burning him alive so like he was basically trapped in fire um which is yeah very very heinous but um i think that's how they did it and so before he before obviously snatch bit the bullet um he said uh do you not ever think of how families may feel or something along the lines of that and like it seems like dabby finally remembered that he kind of responded to that at the end of the chapter and he was just like i thought about it so hard that i went crazy so it's either that um bear in mind like dabby is an interesting character like he's with the, he joined the league of villains because of stain's ideology so he's not straight up like shigaraki like he's kind of like stain but i wouldn't go so far to saying he's in the same realm of stain in the sense of being an anti-hero because this guy kills so yeah dabby is an interesting character however um I'm not sure what either what he said at the end is alluding to the fact of Snatch's response saying, Oh yeah, I thought about that so crazy so hard I went crazy. You know, like he truly had maybe remorse for like family's victims, or he was just like a, it was just like a joke saying that, oh I tried to remember who Snatch was, I went crazy kind of thing. I'm not really sure. But um if you guys have any uh, other info about that, maybe something which is maybe I'm missing something, do let me know in the comments below. But um Aside from that in this chapter, I'm really intrigued with Hawks. Hawks' character in the sense of how, yeah, we thought, I, I think, I'm not going to lie, at first I was just like, yes, yes, like, I predicted this. Because I think I did say maybe Hawks is the one that coerced this because it just looked too shifty. I I'm not sure if I could trust him yet. Um, And yeah, partly so. Partly so. So instead of Hawks actually being a traitor, he's a spy. Um, he's infiltrated into the League of Villains to try and gain their trust so he can get back in info. Um, he can get back intel about what the League of Villains are doing, where's their base, their plans, Shigaraki and all sorts. Like we know that Grand Torino and all of them, they've got um like a what's the word? They've got like a hunt. They're trying to search down Shigaraki. So the more the merrier. And we know that even it said in this chapter, these heroes, the side of the heroes, they are severely, how would you say, um, under-resourced in the terms of what they're doing to combat this, what the League of Villains are trying, what they're planning. Um, All Might's gone. Endeavor currently now is in the hospital. We don't know for how long. Hawks' wings seem to actually be growing back. I may be incorrect, but from the look of it, it seems like they grow back. Like, it seems like it's gotten bigger when, you know, he's talking to Dabby. I may be incorrect, but that's what I think. So, yeah, I feel like Hawks' wings are, I don't know, maybe, I don't, yeah, maybe they just grow back. Because at the end of the day, like, I'm not really sure. I was going to say something about birds, but I was just like, yeah, I don't really know much about birds. Because um, you know how, like, snakes shed their skin and all that kind of stuff. But do feathers, coat, uh, that, is that even the right term? I don't know. Like bird servers. Anyway, so yeah, I, I think th they are growing back. But regardless of it, Hawks is in a sticky situation. I think morally he's going to feel a little bit conflicted. Like it says in this chapter, like he's not supposed to care about the victims. But we see in this chapter he's, he, he cares about what happened to Endeavor. So I feel like that may be his downfall. Like at the end of the day, um, Dabby was just, how is there zero deceased? Like we know that Hawks is not going to be the one that's going to let people die. Um, That's what I think personally. Maybe he... He's going to do it for the job kind of thing. But I personally feel like that's going to be his downfall. That he's gonna, he's obviously going to get caught. Like, there's no like, there's no doubt about it. The guy's going to get caught. Whether it be by Dabby or any other The League of Villain members, um, he is going to get caught. And what happens to him then is going to be intriguing. So, yeah, the Icarus theme of him getting too close to the sun in the sense of him, you know, giving up too many of his feathers, um, getting too close to high end um, and being yeah, too close to Endeavor's flame. Um, that's it wasn't truly just for that in the sense of it was more for maybe he's gonna he's gonna get too close to the League of Villains and they're thinking hang on like who is this guy like something's amiss you know um so yeah is that a death like incoming I'm not really sure either way he is he's playing a dangerous game um the guy's playing a very very dangerous game but yeah I love this chapter the like just how Horikoshi did it because at first we thought, you know, the the reveal's gonna come about the sun. Then no, then we saw, you know, high not high end, sorry, Hawks being the traitor. And we're like, what the heck's going on? And then we find out later that he's a spy. So yeah, guys, please tell me your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think is gonna happen next week? We saw again another
other reactions of the kids, you know. Tats, Tatsu? My bad. Um, I believe his name is Natsu Todoroki and maybe Ray, I believe that's her name. Um, yeah, so guys, please tell me the thoughts in the comments below. Peace out, guys, and goodbye.